may I, may I first say that, you know, it's hard to top that kind of performance. <laughs> Uh, good afternoon. Um, perhaps most of us here would, ha would know of a relative, say a brother or a sister or a cousin or a niece or a nephew who is the science geek. So from poetry we go to science. So, <laughs> you know, the one who can tear toys apart and bring them together, the one who memorized dinosaurs' names, the one who can solve calculus uh, problems, the science geek. Also, around this time, some schools uh, will soon have graduation rights, and high school students and their parents are thinking of college and are preparing for college, taking exams in different universities. Here's a suggestion. If they are so inclined, why not encourage our cousins, relatives, brother, sister, uh, nephew, niece, or even the parents, most of all, who will pay the tuition, to pursue a degree or a career in science. You know, become a biologist, a chemist, a mathematician. I myself am a physicist, and I guarantee you it's going to be worth it. Why become a scientist? So, eh, let's get the practical reasons out of the way first. So, most of the parents will say, okay ba ang sweldo dyan? Well, I, well, because of salary standardization for the salary is actually pretty comfortable. Okay, one practical concern of parents. The second concern, listen, if you can spend for the medical, sc medical school or the law school of your children, it takes about the same time to train as a scientist. Okay? But third, and most important of all is the fact that we do not have enough scientists in the Philippines. In fact, in 2011, we counted how many physicists there are in the Philippines, and we came around 90 to 100 active physicists, you know, the ones who do research. And in a country of 100 million population, that literally means we're one in a million. So there, it's... We really do not have enough scientists, and our country badly needs scientists. Why? First of all, the whole world, we have global problems. Global problems like pandemics. Pandemics like HIV, Zika virus, etc., SARS. Global problem. Everywhere around the world, there's this pandemic. We have climate change, which leads to extreme weather events which lead to disaster. And we need an army of scientists to predict where the path of the next superstorm will uh, go and, and prepare for that. The thing is, we, need, we have global problems, but the solutions that come out of Europe or America may not be suitable in the Philippines. We need rooted, Filipino scientists who can create local solutions to global problems that we face. Okay? So, as, what do I mean by local solutions? I'll give you an example by way of the research that I do. As said in the introduction, I do research on color and image and video. So, give me an image or a video, I can extract more information from them. And we create tools to extract more information from video and images. One of the work that I do is with marine scientists. Now, if you've heard of coral reefs, coral reefs are the forest of the sea. When you snorkel in a beach, you will see they look like rocks, but they are actually living things. But being the forest of the sea, they have to be monitored to be managed properly, like most forests. They're hard to see. They're hard to see unless you go down and take a look. In fact, the way that it's currently being mapped and monitored right now is by satellite imagery and um, algorithms to predict where the coral reefs and the mangroves and the seagrass are, are used to, for example, in this graph, to tell where they are. However, these are all guesswork and you still need people to take a look. And these are uh, locals 
from a coastal community who are trained to do what is known as a manta tow. They hang on to a boat and they are dragged by a boat. They look down at the sea and take a look at how much coral cover there is. They are being towed. They take a rest every two hours, of course, being dragged by a boat like that. Now, the thing with manta tow is it gets too tiring and there is subjectivity there. And you don't have permanent visual records. So, currently, what is done is that you hire scuba divers and marine ecologists to take a video of the seafloor. And then now you can analyze the video uh, of the field, say in the lab, and then count how many coral, corals there are. But the thing with all of these is they're labor intensive, they can be inaccurate, and they are expensive. Scuba dive gear is expensive. And in the case of grounding damage, for example, in Tubataha, what happened in Tubataha when the USS Guardian ran aground in our uh, World Heritage Site, these techniques are slow. And so we thought about solutions so that the Philippines can map its coral resources effectively, efficiently. In other, in, in other countries, they use remotely operated vehicles, ROVs. Okay? But can you imagine a third-class barangay operating, buying, uh, buying uh, 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 an ROV, much less maintaining it? So we thought, we are an archipelagic country. 60% of our country is covered by sea or near the coast. And we have different bangka, different designs of bangka all around the Philippines. Why not use the bangka? And instead of getting an ROV or a robot, create a towable platform. Just put the camera there so you don't have any diver. And so this is our solution. We call it the Automated Rapid Reef Assessment System, or ARAS. And this is teardrop, that's the hardware. You can put a camera, like a GoPro inside, you can lower it beside the boat. And we also created a software for stitching video. And we nicknamed it Kiko and Stitch, after my <laughs> student, Fran Francis, who created that, uh, whose thesis this is. And so this is how it works. You, you have a GoPro inside Teardrop, and it, it's running video, and then you lower it beside the boat, and you tow it uh, by, uh, using the banka, and then it takes videos that look like this. Okay? And these videos, what you do is you feed it into Kiko and Stitch, and it will stitch it like so, in six-second segments. And since we also have global positioning system on the boat, we can determine where the stitch was obtained. And so we can even map it in Google Earth. And now, the coastal communities would now have a, uh, an idea where the coral reefs and where the resources are and how they look. Okay? Now we have a... Innovation is, is currently ongoing, and so now we have a better towing platform. We nicknamed it Towpedo. And it works like this. So it, it, it slices cleanly on the water. It's very small and compact. You can carry it uh, in a knapsack. Okay? And it's, it glides smoothly. So it's easier and more compact and easier to use, actually. Uh, we can create stitches with labels. We are able to estimate a uh, meter or scale bar so that uh, communities can also measure how big their coral reef colonies are. And there is site information and where they were taken and at what depth. And ecologists can label these images and then create a thematic map to tell where the resources are. So again, this is, oh, uh, you can open this in Google Earth. Um, the, we've been deploying this technology all around the Philippines. In fact, the southernmost part that we've been to is Tawi-Tawi. Yes, Tawi-Tawi. So we went there, we demonstrated teardrop, we took video in Turtle Island or Simunul, this, is, uh, this island is called Simunul, and then we stitched and then play, uh, pasted it in Google Earth, and then anyone can click on any of these sites and find out what the resources look like on the site, and you see something like this. You can even see there's a turtle in the view. Okay. Now, how about aerial photography? Now, uso ngayon ang drones. So drones can carry cameras and can take aerial photo. But again, can you imagine a third-class barangay buying and operating and maintaining a drone? Besides, besides, 
if you do it in the ocean, you have salty mist, salt fog, and it can corrode the electronics of your drone. So we thought, what about just use a kite for aerial photography? And yes, we can do that. And this is not new science. This is actually being, uh, uh, is going on for a while. But we showed this to the communities. And it's easy to operate. Just let the, uh, the kite go, and it can fly like this with the camera in tow. And it can uh, take pictures of shallow coral reefs, like this is in Palawan. <clears throat> so now you can see large extents. And, uh, square meters and square kilometers, you might argue that, hey, take, uh, wait a minute, uh, the image looks like it's uh, distorted, but this can be solved by image processing. It can be straightened out like so. And then if you put markers on the surface of the water, you can even make measurements. You can actually measure the extent of your coral resources. Now, the thing about the kite is it's like a toy. And, and when we demonstrate this to uh, the uh, coastal communities and the coastal managers who are mostly volunteer fishermen who, who guard their protected areas, marine protected areas, they like using it and it's easy to use to them. So this is how it looks. We take a lot of action shots because what we do is we have the GoPro tied to the kite and we set the GoPro such that it can capture images every half second. So as we lower or deploy the kite, we get some selfie pictures. Okay. So, this is in Sambales. And as you can see from the next picture, uh, flying a kite is easy because the young one can do that. This is the youngest marine protected area fisherman volunteer. And even the old guys like using it. <laughs> okay. right. So this is what I mean by local solutions for global problems. The thing here is environment, uh, coastal resource management, uh, resource mapping, marine resource mapping. Once again, the appeal is if you have, if you know of young people in your family who are inclined in the sciences, please encourage them. We, we need a lot of scientists in the Philippines because we have so many global problems needing local solutions and we need rooted Filipino scientists who can create local solutions which are suitable for Filipinos. Thank you.